The company Oclo is congratulating its former board member, Chris Wright. He was recently confirmed as the new U.S. Energy Secretary. He has now resigned, of course, from the board. Mr. Oclo says, so says Mr. Wright's experience in energy and technology was instrumental in shaping its vision, a vision that seems to be paying off. Our closed shares are more than doubled this year. Now, <clears throat> it develops ways to power AI data centers with nuclear energy, small nuclear power stations, basically. Jacob DeWitt is the chief executive, uh, joins me now. Good to have you again, sir. Ah, I see you've got a picture of one of your, uh, behind you, of one of your uh, cute nuclear uh, potentials. I do. Anyway. Yeah. After there we you go. About it last time, I had to make sure it was front and center. <laughs> Absolutely, I still wait. I'm still looking forward to going and, and seeing one of. But look, first of all, I mean, I'm not for a second suggesting that the that the, the secretary, you know, will will favour you. Or in other, you know, now he is energy secretary. I, I would. I'm not suggesting that for one second. What I am saying, though, is that you have a very good understanding of what his priorities are and that your company is probably well and truly within that ambit of energy diversification and sustainability and sufficiency. Yes, I mean, uh, first of all, I, I really can't imagine a better Secretary of Energy from someone who is truly an energy expert and a self-proclaimed energy nerd. I want that, right, as a Secretary of Energy. Uh, and he's someone who spent his whole life fascinated by how we as humankind can harness and use energy to better right our lives. Um, and has dedicated himself to work on that in a number of different fields, ranging from you know more conventional oil and gas, but also support on, uh, on, on nuclear as well as geothermal. So I think you're going to see a pretty exciting uh, era ahead as we try to sort of accelerate and unleash even more potential in this country, given all of the amazing resources we have. But the role of fossil fuels, LNG, um, the growth that we're going to see, I mean, in a sense, that is a contradiction it's a downright contradiction in terms to what you are offering, which is a fossil fuel alternative, uh, I mean, in a cheapish form of nuclear fuel, which has its own problems. But it is the primary easy option against fossil fuel. Yeah, I, I think when we look at it, and I think what you know, one of the reasons we were excited to get Chris involved with the company as an investor and then a board member, He's always been about just more reliable, abundant, and more affordable energy. But a key term of all that is more. Um, because I think when you look at what is one of the greatest drivers on human development and quality of life across the entire planet, it's access to energy. We have way, way too many people on this planet on energy poverty. And we even have energy poverty issues in the United States that, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to need to address with everything on hand. But you have to think about the long time scales here. Nuclear, to me, is a vastly superior energy source than everything out there, including fossil systems. It will, I think, inevitably replace those. But it's going to take some time, just given the dominance that, that, that oil and gas have had. And I think if you talk to folks, even in the oil and gas side, who see the sort of and understand the actual energy physics, they wouldn't disagree with that. And that's why you see some of them getting involved in nuclear, because it's like, all right, this Do is maybe the multi-decadal or even century scale, but that's where we're going to go. Do you think LNG is sort of the cuckoo in the nest here, that everybody is saying that it is the panacea, in a sense. It is the it is the transition fuel to a greener. But the critics say it's even worse than. And there are some of them who say, you know, they'd rather open up a, a, a coal fire station, uh, a coal power station, than have a bit of LNG. Yeah, I think that's a little silly. But I do think, I mean, LNG plays an important role to being being able to right. play, you know, basically export the resource we have. But look, it's, it's from a physics perspective, it's just not as good as what you can get with nuclear, right? I mean, when you split an atom, you get 50 million times more energy than a typical hydrocarbon reaction. I mean, when 50 is... million times is a great advantage to have. So physics is going to win here and drive this stuff forward. When am I going to get to see one of those things behind you? Well, we're very excited. To, I mean, what you said, we're going to have to invite you out when we turn one of these on. So, you know, targeting 2027 for that first plant to come well, online and uh, maybe we'll go. bring you out for some of the hey. activities going on. Hey, I'm getting on. A, I'm getting on a bit in years. Don't wait too long. You know, I'd, I'd like to. I'd no, like we to won't. Get... We won't wait too long. Just a couple. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Very grateful for your time Likewise. tonight. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.